why you should do a Roth. That's what we're going to talk about here today at the Heritage Wealth Planning YouTube channel. Do this in a couple videos because I think it's actually critically important you understand what is going into a Roth as opposed to deferring your money into your employer-sponsored plan, be it your thrift savings plan, your 401k, your 403b, and I guess you could say a 457 as well. A little bit different there. But anyway, what we're going to talk about here is the Roth component of either a Roth IRA where you have con contributions of which 5500 is a max if you're under the age of 50, 6500 is a max if you're over the age of 50, and then uh, your Roth 401k, Roth TSP, Roth 403b. So we're going to talk about that here today. So if you like what you see here at Heritage Wealth Planning, subscribe, my friends, subscribe. So I get this probably an email a day on this. Like, Josh, the uh, way I calculate it is I'm not going to be any better off by doing a Roth relative to my taxes now versus the future. I had a guy, a uh, nice guy, seemed like a friendly enough chap, but he said he was going to use a 33% tax bracket uh, <laughs> for money going in. So he's deferring 33% and instead would pay 22% on the money coming out. And I said, well, in that case, yeah, you should absolutely do a traditional as opposed to Roth. I mean, if you're paying, if you're saving 33% in tax deferrals today and you're going to have 22% coming out, it's going to be hard to make the argument that a Roth is better. However, I would still make that argument and we'll show you with that here in this series of videos we'll do here today to talk about the benefits of a Roth because everybody everybody seems to be missing a couple of key components on the Roth it's not just taxes now versus taxes later yes that is an integral part of the solution of the idea if I'm in a 33% tax bracket and avoid paying 33% and that way I can only pay 12% or 22% in the future inherently a Roth looks a little bit sketchy uh, for that one comparison, if I'm in a 22% tax bracket now and I'm going to be in a 22% tax bracket later, it's not even Stephen. The scales are tilted in favor of the Roth significantly even there. If I'm in a 12% tax bracket now and I'll be in a higher tax bracket in the future, then it's not debatable. Roth is the way to go. So even of those three scenarios, two of the three absolutely outweigh the Roth, which we'll show you here today. And I'd even argue the third one will as well. Again, the third one is I'm a higher tax bracket today than I will be in the future. So let's dive right into this. So I got a couple here. We're going to say husband and wife. All right. And so they're husband and wife. They're married. Now, will this same apply to single people? Probably not as much. We'll talk about that in a different episode here. But for single people, uh, we're, we're just right now, we're just talking about married people. But if you're single and you're thinking about getting married, that might be something to consider. But for right now, we're just talking about married couples. So we got husband and wife. Both are 50 years old, 50 50. All right. They both have 401ks of 150,000 in it. All right. So they each have 150,000 in their 401k. I just made these numbers up. I mean, you can do whatever you want, but just follow me, for example. Uh, they both make that between them, they make $100,000 of income. All right. So 100,000 of income of which 50 is for the husband and 50 is for the wife. So we're married filing jointly. I'm not going to have any deductions, not going to have any homeowners, uh, housing, mortgage interest, not going to have anything like that. Just straight numbers so you can see where this is going. All right, so again, husband and wife, both have 150000 in their 401k. Both are uh, getting 50000 a year as income. So can, even Stephen, across the board. Their company matches 8% of their contributions. 8% of their contribution the company matches. So husband says, I'm going to put $10,000 of my, my uh, deferred, I'm going to defer $10,000 a year into my 401k. And wife does the exact same thing. She's deferring $10,000 a year into her 401k as well. And they're getting a $4,000 a year match. And she's getting a $4,000 a year match too. So the exact same scenario on both sides, both 50, both 150,000 and the 401k. Both putting $10,000 a year as deferrals into their 401k, both getting a $4,000 match or 8%. That's how it works. Now, what happens is because they're putting that, that $10,000 each into their 401k, their income, their gross income is $100,000, all right? But they have $20,000 they are just writing off the top because that is a salary deferral. You're deducting it. You're saying, I'm not getting a salary, so it's not countable as taxable income in the year in which you uh, defer it to your 401k. So their age, they're not even they're really, they're, they're AGI, yeah, they're AGI. After you take those $20,000 of, the, it's not even a deduction, it's just not even counted in the tax form to begin with. But anyway, that will be $80,000, all right? Now they have $24,000 of standard deductions, $12,000 for him, $12,000 for her because they're under the age of 65. 
which means their taxable income is $56,000, all right? So we have taxable income of $56,000. So I go to my trusty calculator, and I say, basically, and look, this is not going to be to the, the exact dollar amount, and just you don't need to be to the exact dollar amount. But we're going to say the first 19000 is taxed at 10%. which even me in my head can say it's 1900 bucks of taxes. Now, 56,000 minus 19 is what, 30, $37,000, $37, which is taxed at 12%, and that is, and I already did this, so if you think I'm so smart, keep thinking that, but I already calculated that with my trusted calculator. As a forty-four hundred and forty dollars, so that's forty-four forty in tax, which means their total tax is going to be six thousand three hundred forty-six. All right, so you with me so far? So six thousand three forty-six is their tax in this scenario. So don't pay much mind to these sidebars yet. Just remember six thousand three hundred forty-six. Now. Let's do this. Let's say they don't contribute to their, for, their uh, let's say they don't, they contribute the 10,000 to their Roth as opposed to their, de, de, uh, their deductible or, or the deferred, I should say. So now, they don't have that 20,000, they have 20,000 more of taxable income. So now we take the 24,000 of standard deductions And their taxable income now is seventy-six thousand. Minus nineteen thousand for the ten thousand dollar percent or ten ten thousand a ten percent tax bracket. Now I do need to break out my trusty calculator. What's that gonna be? Fifty-seven thousand, I think. Fifty-seven thousand. Let's see. Yeah, 57,000, and that's at 10%, at 12%. So that's 1,900 here, and 57,000 times 12% is 6840. So we add these two together, and I don't know, so I gotta get my calculator, plus 1,900, 8740. So they pay 2,500 more in taxes because they have $20,000 more of income, if that makes sense. And there you go, there's a 12% bracket. All right, so 2,500 more in taxes, let me write that down. I got to write it on my note because we're going to come back to this. 8740 tax with Roth. All right, so let's keep going. So let's spray this off. So, so far, so good. You with me? You with me so far? So again, we have, in fact, I'll probably stop this one right here and go with another one after just a second. So the situation, just to revisit this, is they, they have the choice. Should they defer the $20,000 to a 401k? deferred and they'll save 2500 in income tax or should they defer or should they just pay the Roth and pay the tax now it's going to cost them 2500 more so we'll come back to another one uh part two of this in just a second so as always if you like what you see subscribe comments questions thoughts the whole thing go to heritagewealthplanning.com i put all kinds of stuff on the on the uh, blog there in fact this whole morning i've been adding stuff adding stuff adding stuff a lot of videos a lot of the podcasts whatnot but anyway, don't forget to subscribe and then uh, comments are always welcome and thumbs up too. All right, so stay tuned. We'll see you next one. Thanks now.